Well, hello, free people of the Rocky Mountain region. Today, I'm joined by Heidi Ganahl, former CU Regent, 2022 governor candidate, and current president of the Rocky Mountain Voice, which provides news, information, and commentary about the issues facing our great state. Well, Heidi, I hope you are well, and thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Brandon. I love all the work you're doing. Oh, appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Well, Heidi, what can you tell us about the leaked election password issue that is making the news right now? This is a very serious issue. And actually, it's leaking passwords. I think it's as a, as a um, public official is a felony in some cases. And after everything Jenna Griswold put Tina Peters through and granted, you know, Tina did some things that the jury thought were not right. One of those things was leaking passwords. And here we are, Jenna Griswold is responsible for 600 passwords being put on a website, a public website. And it it went on for months, like they, they've been on there for a couple months. And she knew for several days before she actually took them down, she didn't take them down until it went public. So there's all kinds of funny business around this that's really disturbing. And shockingly, Kyle Clark, called her out on some of this stuff. I think there's ulterior motives there, but we can talk about that later. But it, it's really bad, Brandon. Yeah, sounds like it, you know, especially with, like you said, Jenna Griswold saying how secure Colorado's elections are, this gold standard, you know, they've been they've been bragging about Colorado for years. Of mm-hmm. course, the persecution of Tina Peters and everything else that goes along with it. It's it's crazy. I mean, well, here we are a week from election a day and this comes out. I mean, what a major news story. It is. And for me, it's it's so shocking to me how I got mocked and called reckless and all these names like election conspiracy theorists, all the things over the last couple months because I expressed concern about some issues in the elections after doing an audit for a couple of years in Douglas County. And for them to treat me that way and then all of a sudden this come out it's like, this is why I was asking the questions. If you dig below that surface of what the public officials say in these fluffy talking points, it starts to get disturbing. And they say, well, why did you bring this out so close to the election? Well, I actually brought this out almost two months ago so that we would have time to address some issues before the election, um, but they weren't having it. And that's really disappointing to me. And hopefully this will get everybody's attention that I couldn't get to say, hey, this there are real issues with our elections. They're far from the gold standard here in Colorado, but they're all they're things that are fixable and we can fix them and we should fix them because a lot of people don't trust their vote right now. And they didn't before this happened. And now this is going to make it even worse. Yeah, I see all the posts on social media about people calling this election rigged and all the uncertainty around it. And that's really not a good thing, right? I mean, that's kind of a a bad place to be in for for a Democratic representative government that we have. But Heidi, you mentioned this 2022 uh, audit in Douglas County. I saw your press conference a few weeks ago. Why did you start digging into this election issue here in Colorado? Yeah. And Brendan, I'll I'll preface this by saying I'm not saying anything bad happened in the 22 election like that I would have won or that Kurt Huffman, who did this with me, would have won. But there were some abnormalities in the numbers that just raised our eyebrows like, what? this is weird. In Douglas County, I almost lost Douglas County. And um, there's a thing called defection rate. So people who voted a straight Republican ticket and then voted for Jared Polis, the number was outrageously high compared to historical numbers. And If you look at even certain um, races like Kevin Van Winkle's race, the defection rate was almost 15 percent. So people that voted for Kevin voted for Polis, 15 percent of them. That was weird. And the other thing that happened was Kurt Huffman lost his race in an R plus 10 district. That means his house race. He should have won by 10 points as a Republican. And he ran a good race. He's a good guy. He was an incumbent and he lost by, you know, by not much, but, you know, there's only losers and winners. So that was odd too. So Kurt and I asked for a recount and um, you can't just recount one district because they're all mixed together in the county. So it ends up, you have to look at the whole county. Well, the first thing that happened was our Republican county clerk, not the one that's in office right now because she was placed into office in January after that election, um, blocked it and had a letter from Jenna Griswold saying, no, we're not going to do it the way you want to do it. Basically, you know, we don't agree with um, your theory that the canvas board runs recounts and they do if you look at the legalities of it. So that was the first weird thing. The second weird thing was after that, and it didn't go the way we wanted to, we wanted to see the paper ballot. So we went through CORA or the Freedom of Information Act 
and they wanted to charge us $212,000 to see the paper ballots. That was the second thing. The third thing was they just pushed back tremendously on giving us access or information that we wanted and needed. And by then, Sherry Davis was in the new clerk and she started to loosen up a little bit and give us more um, information and have conversations with us. But it took over a year and an attorney and a lot of money to get access to those paper ballots. And we finally did um, a scan of about 83,000 paper ballots in April of this year. But after that, we haven't been able to have a meeting with the clerk's office. We've gotten an email exchange, some questions back and forth, but um, Sherry and her staff won't set like a live meeting to talk through this stuff. And that's when we discovered some of these things that um, we, we wanted the public to know about. We wanted to work through the clerk first, but when that didn't work, we said, this has got to go public and we've got to try and put some pressure on to get this changed. So after two years of doing this research and really digging in, I mean, what, what election issues should Coloradans be aware of? Is there any capability for these machines to be accessed through Wi-Fi or anything like that? Yeah, Brandon, actually we asked point blank because, you know, everybody's concerned about that. And the, the one side says there's absolutely no access to the internet. And the other side says, no, the, there's access and there's flipping going on of votes and all this stuff. So we point blank asked the county clerk and her attorney if there was a way for the machines to connect to the internet. And they said, absolutely not. Well, then if you look at the purchase information on the machines, which is public information, it was purchased with remote Wi-Fi access cards. And so we thought, well, that's weird. Well, maybe they took them out. Well, if they don't even know it exists, did they really take them out? And come to find out, they said, yes, there's actually, they're in there, but they're turned off. Well, once you start to dig in and talk to the security experts, there's no way to turn off. Even if you click it off on your computer, you can't turn off the BIOS completely. And there's always vulnerabilities and ways that bad actors can get in there if there is capability in the voting systems. And there are. And after we brought that out in the conference, um, Matt Crane actually admitted he's the head of the Clerks Association. There were 12 counties that had this. We just thought it was Douglas County. So that was the first issue. The second issue was the post office. And Bob Cooper with Colorado Institute for Fair Elections did a deep audit on the post office invoicing. And the post office is supposed to track every single undeliverable ballot that comes back, that goes out to a bad address and gets rejected. And they have to basically account for those to the county clerk's office and return them to them. Well, after he started looking at the invoices, he found a discrepancy of over 30,000 ballots that are unaccounted for or missing in nine counties. And so he tried to meet with them, tried to find out what was going on. They blame it on all the mail being grouped together, but that's not accurate because when you look at the invoices, you can tell it's separated out by the ballots. So we still haven't gotten a good response on that. And the third thing is um, the drop boxes. I don't know if you've seen me, my Twitter pictures, but the Dropbox cameras are horrible. Like most of them, you can't see, you can't, there's no way you could tell how many ballots they were putting in the box or it's usually dark and shady or even there's one where the sign is right in front of the person's head as they go put the drop the ballots in the drop box it's comical and so what we found is most of the cameras around the state are low low quality so they're not submissible in court they're not pointed in the right direction or they're too far away and um so we created a public dropbox observer program after battling it out with the secretary of state that we were allowed to do this under our first amendment rights and we're doing trainings right now almost every night on zoom to teach the public how to be a dropbox observer and do the job that the cameras should do so it's the three things it's the remote access it's the u.s post office and it's the um, the drop boxes were the three things we found in the audit. But then since then, all heck's grown loose and there's lots of other issues that we can provide more input on. Wow. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. You know, this is supposed to be such an important. Our elections are so important, you know, and you would think just to remove all doubt, just to get it so people aren't concerned or, you know, um, worried that their vote doesn't count, that the secretary of state or the state government themselves would just do a better job of providing better security, better access to the public, kind of more transparency so people can feel confident in their vote. You know, especially after 2020, you'd think that this would be a prerogative of the government, but is it just, they're just so arrogant that they say, Hey, listen, we got it covered. Uh, you know, we don't, you don't, don't worry about it. Common person, common voter, uh, just trust the government. Let's go along with what we're saying. 
you know, or, but then, but then, you know, that seems to be their mindset, but then all this bad stuff happens where they don't know about these Wi-Fi cards. They don't know about these passwords that are released on these Excel documents out to the public. I mean, is it just incompetence? Do you think Heidi, or is it more nefarious than that? Well, the more I dig in, the more I think there's some nefarious things happening, but here's the scoop. Like the county clerks are good intention people. I don't blame this on them. I think they're naive and they're not doing their homework and they're believing what the secretary of state and Matt Crane, the head of the public, the clerks association are telling them and it's not accurate. And so I've been trying to get through to them to say, guys, you got to shake this up a little bit. You got to get some security experts around you. You got to get some forensic um, specialists to come in and make sure that your systems and processes are good. Look what just happened in Mesa County, the signature verification process. So when you sign the back of your ballot, it goes into the clerk's office and they um, have either have a machine that checks the signature to make sure it matches the score database, which is where they store like your driver's license signature, other signatures that you may have um, provided to the government. And they store, I think, three signatures and it compares it. If it doesn't match, it kicks it up to a second level check. That's a human check. And what happened in Mesa County was the machine kicked out 12 the human said, I think, I think there were eight that were okay that they, no, four that they put through and the others they kicked out. And three of them actually were put in as votes. Like they take the envelope away from the ballot, put it into the system. And after that, you can't identify that ballot. So three, there's three uh, counterfeit votes in the system. We don't know if there's thousands more, hundreds more, there's no more. And so the only way you have to verify identity on the ballots is the signature. And here's the rub, Brandon. We don't know if the process works because we've never had an auditor look at it. We need to bring in an independent forensic auditor to say, hey, we've tested your process, your system, whether it's machine or human, here's your error rate, or here's the, 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 the percentage of wrong guesses because Secretary of State Jenna Griswold said, as long as you're 51% sure that signature is correct, it can go through. Do you think a bank would allow that or a mortgage company? Heck no. So there's all kinds of issues with, with um, the way that we verify identity. There's the voter rolls that are bloated. In fact, this Friday, Jenna Griswold has to basically tell us who the dead people are on the voter rolls. This is so silly. Who knew dead people have privacy rights? But that's her argument. And um, so the voter rolls are an issue too. So sorry, I'm going all over the place. There's so many issues to talk about and so many things happening. And what we need to focus on right now is the election next week and everybody needs to vote. Like regardless of if you have concerns, you need to turn your ballot in. If you're worried about it, walk it into the clerk's office and hand it to them. Um, but do it before election day. Election day is going to be a mess. So, <laughs> well, that's a great point. Yeah, there's a lot of issues to address, a lot of long term fixes that need to be implemented. But yeah, within this last week here, everybody get your votes in. Uh, sign up to be a uh, Dropbox monitor if you can. I'll include the link at Free State Colorado, of course. And yeah, pay attention. Pay attention to any irregularities out there. If people see anything trained, document it, of course. But I just want to get back to that uh, password issue. So the password issue, it was for the, the bio system. And you said that there's this connection with the, the Wi-Fi cards in, in the BIOS system as well there. I mean, so, you know, I'm not an expert in any of this, but it, it seems like, you know, if, the, if there's hardware there that could be connected to the Internet and then there's passwords that can allow access to these deeper layers of the hardware. I mean, that seems pretty concerning, doesn't it? It's very concerning. And. I get they have a fluffy story about how there's no way anybody can do it. They'd have to actually physically go in to the machines. I I don't trust them anymore. I don't trust them. Jenna Griswold flat out lied in 2020 and said that, I have the quote, I've put it on Twitter, that all um, remote access is stripped from the machines in the trusted build process before it even goes to the clerks. That's why the clerks believed her. And now they're saying 12 counties still have systems, but I don't know if we should believe that either. Like they've they've done a pretty good number on our trust with what they're saying and what they're not. So I would like an independent third party to come in and say, here's the scoop with the Wi-Fi access. Here's the scoop with the signatures. Here's the scoop with um, the voting rolls. Here's the scoop with the passwords. Like 
Could they have done something? Could they have gotten in? Could somebody have hacked using these passwords? They were on the internet for a couple months. Um, so yeah, I don't know who to believe right now. I believe the experts, the security experts, and they're saying, absolutely, this is a huge issue. Well, I think it all does come down to that word trust. I think that's one of the biggest things. There's such a lack of trust in the government, lack of trust in the media, lack of trust in institutions. I mean, that's a big a crisis I think our culture is going through right now. And I think there's no way around it. You need a third party independent organization to come in there of people who are non-political, non-partisan, who can do some sort of testing, do some sort of auditing, do some sort of uh, check on all of these types of systems. That's really the only way it's going to happen. And I think part of the reason, you know, we, we have such trust issues, like you said, is the Secretary of State's office has become so politicized, you know, with yeah. the Jenna Griswold's attacks on Donald Trump, with all of her political rhetoric over the years. And she's using her position, it seems, in my opinion, at least, using her position as Secretary of State to really push these extreme political agendas that she's really trying to just to, to prop up across our state. And I think that's cost a lot of the trust that that the Secretary of State's office should have. You're spot on, Brandon. And I know you and I agree on um, the role of government and it's it's far surpassed. It's it's where it should be. And right now, the way back is through transparency, accountability, holding people to account, like holding Jenna Griswold to account. She should resign or be fired I don't by the people of Colorado. We'd have to recall, but she should resign. Um, this is bad. And she's blaming it right now on one of her employees uh, as a leader, I've led a $100 million organization. That is the worst possible way to respond to a situation like this. Like take responsibility, um, tell people what you're going to do, how you're going to fix it, provide full transparency, admit that something went wrong. And Americans are pretty forgiving. So are Coloradans, but we need to know what we're dealing with. We need to have a real handle on the situation before we can get there. Yeah, great point. Great point. Well, Heidi, you know, with all of these issues you've addressed, should Coloradans be worried about the accuracy accuracy of their vote this year? Well, I definitely think we need um, an outside independent forensic auditor to come in and look at everything and make sure that uh, the machines weren't compromised and the systems weren't compromised because of this password issue. But also, you know, I think like I said, we've got to vote. This is the best system we've got right now. So we all have to vote, 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 vote. And hopefully the results will be so big that it won't um, be at question. But here's the thing. If Mesa County, if somebody loses by three votes, what happens? We know there's three bad votes in there. So then you've put everything at, uh, you know up for, for doubt. So I think the most important thing they can do is provide incredible transparency, accounting, answer every question, have a debate, have our experts come on and actually debate their experts so we can get like the real deal. Like on stage, we talked about that um, on Mandy Connell the other day. Um, so yeah, I it's a tough place we're in right now. And some things we can fix in time for the election on Tuesday and some we can't, so... Well, Heidi, I saw a post you had on X, formerly Twitter, and I and it really resonated with me. You know, does it surprise you that the corporate media in Colorado is going after Jenna Griswold and really focusing on this password issue as strongly as they are? I mean, we see Nine News, we see Colorado Public Radio. You know, these people do so much to support the Democrats in our in our state. Uh, I was a little shocked. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're they're really going after Jenna. They're really making this a big deal, and that's not something I would expect. What do you think is the motivation there? Well, there's two things I think are motivating them. One is uh, Jenna's not making them look good right now. And they and this is a national story. So they've got to kind of make her the sacrificial lamb and take her out or, you know, make her look bad or else it's going to look bad for everybody else. And this is a really tough story to try and cover up like the media typically does. So I think there's that, too. So, of course, Kyle stepped in. And he's like, I'll be the hero. I'll go after her. But I think there's another side to the story, and that's the upcoming governor's race. And I think it's between Phil Weiser, Jenna Griswold, Joni Goose, Mike Johnston. And so there's some serious stuff going on behind the scenes. And perhaps Kyle and some of the other media players saw an opportunity to help their buddy Polis, who likes Phil Weiser, and take out Jenna Griswold now um, with this issue. So I, I think those are some things to think about.
Um, but maybe, maybe all of a sudden Kyle and some of the other media just woke up and decided to be great journalists and unbiased. I, that's not been my experience. Yeah. The odds of that happening are astronomical. Well, There's no it's chance. Why you started this and it's why I started Rocky Mountain Voice because we so badly wanted the truth. We just want the truth and we can't get it in Colorado unless you, me, some of the other players out there, Forrest Mommy, we all speak up, right? And thank God we have X, because if we didn't have X, I don't know where we'd be right now. Definitely. We're in a new media landscape, that's for sure. You know, this distrust of this legacy corporate media, I think there's some good that'll come out of it and hopefully get some more truth, more information out there, and a diversity of opinion that we haven't probably seen uh, in a while here in Colorado. But Heidi, one last question for you. Any predictions here for the uh, election coming up on Tuesday? What's your most controversial prediction, would you say? Oh, my most controversial prediction. Um, I think we're going to sweep the House, the Senate, and the presidential race. I, I know that's controversial in a way. Um, it's not going to be easy. It might be a legal fight for a little while, but it's really important that we do because if Trump wins and we lose the House of Representatives, they're going to they're going to block him and they're not going to let him get in. Um, the other thing I wanted to say real quick, Brandon, about people say, well, what can I do about these issues with the secretary of state? The county clerks are your best route to go, but also your county commissioners. Your county commissioners hire and fire the county attorney. And the person who blocked us from doing the recount the way we wanted it was actually the county attorney under the direction of the county commissioners and working with the county clerk. So call and email and text your county commissioners. Tell them you want transparency. You want to understand exactly what's going on. Do your voting systems have Wi-Fi? Are your accounting, is the accounting with the post office going to be fixed? And are your drop boxes monitored correctly? And is the footage viewed? And then also ask them about the signature verification. Ask them what they think about what Janet just did and how they feel about their passwords, their security, their protection. Talk to them. They are the ones that probably can make the biggest difference right now. Wow. Yeah. Great information, Heidi. I really appreciate that. You know, Free State Colorado, always try and focus on oh, solutions and what we can do. So I think that's really, really important. You know, it's easy to feel so hopeless out there with so much bad things happening in the world these days, but it's important to find those solutions, figure out what we can do, especially at that local level. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, get involved with your county commissioners, your county clerks, county attorney, know who these people are, make sure that they know who you are and that you're going to be a voice for liberty and, and truth and justice and all the good stuff out there. And don't let them get away with doing bad things, right? Yeah, and I would suggest um, if you want to be a public Dropbox observer, it's pretty cool just to hop on one of the Zooms at least and find out more about it because it's really the last few days that are really critical that we need you. And during the night too, if you want to go do an all-nighter and hang out with your friend in the car or whatever watching. Um, it's coloradodropbox.com to sign up. And then we have another website, rtr-.com. It's road to red com rtr-.com, where you can, we're working with Turning Point with their app and you can call, text, send, it's too late to send postcards, call, text, and door knock. But the cool thing is you can do it here in Colorado or you can help in swing states. And I would highly encourage everybody to pick a swing state, get on that Turning Point app. You can go to rtr-.com. There's a video that shows you how to do it. Sit on your couch, have a glass of wine, and dial for votes. Get those people to turn out to vote. It goes to low propensity Republican voters. So re Republican voters who typically don't vote very often. We got to get them off the couch and out to vote. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you for everything you do. Really appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with me. And uh, let's get this information out there to people. Uh, keep me updated or keep us updated if there's any other information that comes out. But we'll be taking. I'll be uh, looking for your article. Uh, coming out on Rocky Mountain Voice, all your articles there, and appreciate you and all your work. Thanks, Brandon. You too. You're doing great work. Um, you're like one. You're one of the best investigative journalists in the whole state. So kudos. Well, thanks, Heidi. Appreciate it. Well, take care, and I hope to talk to you soon.